You're, you're good? <laughs> you're Thank you. I want to welcome everyone to, uh, today to the YMCA. This, is, um, this has been a hub of some fantastic announcements for us. Uh, today we have one that really, there's, there's going to be people who are going to look at it and say, this is a game changer. This is something that, that really needs to be done in Ontario. For the last almost six years, one of the recurring themes with the Ministry of Labor Training and uh, Immigration Skills Development has been what can we do to improve the lives of people who are working in Ontario? How do we get to a position where those who want to improve their situation, who want to continue on that career path, have better opportunities to do it? And I am very pleased today that we have an opportunity to have Minister David Puccini from just south of us, Northumberland, Peterborough South, uh, coming today to make this announcement because it's something that is good not just for the greater Peterborough area but for all of Ontario. And with that, I'd like to introduce my good friend, Minister of Labour, Training, Immigration Skills Development, David Puccini. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Dave. It's wonderful to be here with all of you uh, this morning. I'm really excited for today's announcement. And thank you uh, to the YMCA for hosting us, David. Uh, greatly appreciate it. And team, um, we have a fantastic group here, but the real star is Jocelyn. Wait until you hear her story. Um, and really, that's why we're here, is, is to serve the public. And it's through transformative stories Politicians can say all we want, but wait till you hear her story. Um, I'm honored to be here with Dave Smith, MPP for Peterborough Kawartha, who's been such a champion. Um, it's an honor to serve in this region with Dave, who, whose ideas and whose leadership, uh, strength and courage for this community are always so welcome. So Dave, thank you for your leadership. The Y is a fitting place to be here today because of all of the important work that the YMCA does to support workers. And look at the hustle and bustle. I mean, the pool is alive and well, the classes, um, to embed employment services and the employment service transformation that we're doing as a government just makes sense. And I had the opportunity to meet the incredible team this morning, and I really appreciate all that they do. We, we're thrilled to be a partner with the YMCA over the past number of years. In Peterborough alone, the government has invested over $35 million to help workers, job seekers and employers with employment services and training programs. When government, the private sector and nonprofits work together, we can tackle truly big problems. As I said, we recognize as a government that not everyone feels like they're getting ahead, especially today in today's inflationary times. So we really do need all hands on deck to solve these problems, helping people prepare for and find better jobs, bigger paychecks, and address the labor shortage, and adapting to the way that work is changing in today's ever-changing world. And one of these things that has changed is that finding the next job has gotten even harder. Despite nearly 250,000 jobs in Ontario going unfilled every year, recently job seekers have faced a never-ending stream of resumes, cover letters, interviews, multiple rejections in a cycle that sometimes feels like it will never end. It's daunting and I've spoken to so many youth about this in Ontario. And after all that work, when you finally make progress, God forbid you get that offer of a job, sometimes it doesn't pay enough to pay the bills or pays less than the one you already have. So after all that effort, imagine being a single parent um, juggling two jobs, that daunting process is a Mount Everest in and of itself. And that's why today I'm announcing that our government intends to introduce legislation that would, if passed, require Ontario employers to include salary ranges in job postings across our province. It's unacceptable reality that women uh, today in Ontario earn an average of 87 cents for every dollar earned by men. Including salary ranges with job postings can help close the gender pay gap while allowing companies to find qualified candidates faster and improve retention, helping tackle the labor shortage. In short, making more information available at the start of the job search process is a win-win for everyone. It empowers the worker, not the businesses. Now, to keep and attract the workers 
to build the roads, schools, hospitals, and affordable homes that we need in Ontario, staff our hospitals, and so much more. We need to ensure that our laws and protections keep up with changes in the workplace. As artificial intelligence tools and algorithms are adopted by Ontario businesses at a rapid rate, they generate high volumes of personal data about job applicants and employees. For a worker who applies today to an online ad, within seconds of hitting send on that resume, a recruiter's AI system can choose them as a preferred candidate and screen out thousands of other applicants. AI systems are able to tell age, sex, race, religion, political affiliation, and can even evaluate your social media accounts to see if someone's personal traits would be a good fit for a company's culture. Moreover, experts have very legitimate concerns over data collection and personal privacy. This is all deeply concerning, which is why, as a response to growing concern about the ethical, legal, and privacy implications of artificial intelligence, our government is also proposing to require employers disclose in job ads if AI is being used in the recruitment process. This will make Ontario one of the first jurisdictions, along with a handful of others in North America, to do this. This is another example of Ontario leading the way in putting workers first, because it's critical that we balance the right to privacy and transparency while supporting technological innovation. Unfortunately, seven in 10 workers experience a form of harassment or violence in the workplace, rates that increase for women and gender diverse workers. To help end workplace misconduct and hold abusers to account, our government is also proposing to conduct consultations on ending the use of non-disclosure agreements in the settlement of cases of workplace sexual harassment or violence. My message to these creeps looking to hide behind NDAs, it's simple, your time is up. Our government will be looking at legislative options to restrict the use of NDAs while protecting the rights of victims and survivors. A victim should never be prevented from telling their story because of an aggressive NDA practice of an employer. And perpetrators should never be able to buy their safety. The fact is, the world is changing, and the way we work is changing with it. We face big problems and new technologies. If we don't act now, we risk falling behind. That's why in the coming days, I'll be announcing more historic changes to benefit Ontario's workers. Together, we're going to make Ontario the best place to live, work, and raise a family. And now I'll turn things over to Jocelyn McNeil to tell her amazing story. And this is why I got up to come up here this morning. So Jocelyn, over to you. Thank you for having me here today. Um, the why has helped me so much. After I had my daughter, um, I returned to the workforce. And it was hard because I couldn't make an income that I could take care of her by myself. And I had recently started doing it on my own, so it became harder. I couldn't find affordable childcare or a place to live. I was bouncing around from couch to couch and relying on family to help me as much as they could. Um, affordable housing was very hard to find as well as housing in general is very hard to find everywhere. So I heard about the YMCA and um, they were doing a program called The Wave to build, help women build skills to be able to do things on their own. And I got connected with um, the employment worker and um, the case manager helped me find affordable childcare and housing for a program for single moms to be able to go back to school so that I could finish my goal that I had in life that I wasn't able to do on my own. Um, I got a secure spot in the child care system for my daughter uh, here at the Y and my case manager helped me um, get applying to college and be able to do everything at school that I wanted to do. I got accepted into the Carpentry and Renovation Technician Program at Fleming College, and I am able to hope, 
I will be able to graduate soon and have a career with a living wage that will, I will be able to carry myself and my daughter now. Um, the Y is going to help me, has already been helping me with finding um, a placement so that I can be successful at the end of all of this. And um, I am, I'm very grateful for all, all of the Y um, people for helping me in every way they can. Thank you. And here's David. People, <clears throat> people often ask me, why do you do what you do? It's people like Jocelyn. Uh, that's what gets me up every day. And uh, the minister and I were speaking before the announcement today. And it really is uh, about stories and stories and impacts on real people. Uh, the YMCA of Central East Ontario, we are a solution-based charity and we look for ways that we can impact our community and make our community better. And whether, whether that's in the area of, of health and, and wellness or whether that's in the area of child care and children and family services and of course in the area of employment. The YMCA of Central East Ontario and YMCA Employment Services is, to, is pleased to be hosting such an important announcement as it impacts both job seekers and employers alike. In our YMCA Employment Centre, we recognize that the, the, the disclosure of AI and promotion of pay transparency within Employment Ontario, employment services can greatly benefit clients in their job search. It provides them with information and tools they need to navigate the job market more effectively, advocate for fair compensation, and ensure a more equitable and transparent job search process. We have seen firsthand the time and effort that clients have spent applying for jobs only to find out once they've received an offer letter that they can't afford to accept the position. And how sad is that? We historically have promoted to employers that including salary information and job postings can improve the hiring process by attracting more relevant candidates, streamlining recruitment, and enhancing trust and transparency. This act will reinforce this and in turn, turn it into a standard practice for everyone. From an employer perspective, it can also contribute to better diversity and inclusion efforts, strengthen the company's reputation, and lead to cost savings in the long run. As AI becomes more prevalent in the recruitment process, it is crucial to consider potential challenges and ethical concerns when using AI in applicant screening. These include issues related to data privacy, algorithmic bias, and the potential for excluding high qualified candidates who might not fit a specific mold or profile. It can also be a valuable tool for modern human resources and recruitment processes as it offers several benefits including efficiency, consistency, and objectivity, while also addressing some of the inherent biases that can creep into traditional hiring methods. As the ministry continues to work in making job search more transparent and equitable for the people of Ontario, this announcement is no doubt a positive step forward. I would like to thank the minister and the Ontario government for their work on this portfolio, and I would like, like, would like to thank the minister and his team uh, for allowing us to host uh, today's event. And lastly, I'd like to say you know, I get the opportunity to speak on behalf of our organization on many occasions. But at the end of the day, I'm just a guy wearing a suit who has the privilege to lead some really special people who get up every day to change people's lives and impact the lives of people in our community to make it better for all. So thank you very much for attending today. And Minister, thank you once again for coming. And I return you to the podium, sir. So we'll open it up to uh, questions at the microphone. Um, if anyone does have a question, if you could come here, or there'll be an opportunity for one-on-ones afterward.
Minister, as uh, Claude Brodin from CBC. Um, the, pro the government has often put out programs uh, such as this in the past, um, but my question is, how is the government going to enforce companies to disclose all of the information that you're, that you're asking for? Will there be fine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as we look, I mean, this, this is legislation that, if passed, will, will make this mandatory. And as we work in prescribing the regulations, um, we have inspectors that uh, in blitzes visit uh, job sites all over Ontario and have led to fundamentally better outcomes for workers. Part of the suite of tools they have include administrative monetary penalties, but this will be discussed uh, with both members of the legislature as we debate this in the coming weeks at committee, a hearing from Ontarians, and uh, will be prescribed in regulation. But I, so it's an excellent question, and I would say, you know, as we've, this is the fourth piece of working for workers legislation. So we're not gonna shy away from continuing to take bold steps to protect workers in the province of Ontario. And all of these start with good ideas. These start from hearing stories like Jocelyn's and others. And you know, that's how we draft good public policy. So thank you for that question. I think we're good. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you. Thanks, Dave.